Christmas. This video is dedicated to all of you out there whose Christmases might not go quite the way you planned because none of us can count on things like pandemics, things like lockdowns, things like health issues. Some of us have lost someone in the family, someone, sometimes we have situations that are just completely outside of our control and Christmas doesn't turn out to be exactly how we would have wanted it. In my case, I'm in my pajamas, no makeup, and you might be wondering a little bit about that. Well, I have a very good reason. This year's Chateau Love Christmas episode almost didn't happen. It is Christmas Eve, and many of you are probably wondering, where have all of the Chateau Love Christmas episodes been? After all, last year, we took you to New York City. We came home, we decorated, we showed you Champagne versus Prosecco in Italy with some of our friends. And I will put the links to those videos at the end of this video because they were all great fun. And we had so many incredible things planned for you for this year. I have just come home, literally just now, on Christmas Eve, and this is why. I've been wondering about whether or not I should show you that I'm here. And then I realized, of course, that lots of you are also perhaps in the hospital or home alone or dealing with your own health issues. And even though what we do is try to show you a lot of wonderful escapism, places to go and see that maybe you haven't had a chance to visit. Um, it doesn't mean that our lives are always perfect or that we don't also have our little challenges from time to time. This is Chateau Love. It's the love we have in our chateau, for other people's chateau, for other friends who own chateau, for visiting chateau, but also it's really a lot about the love. And this Christmas, whether you are celebrating with a hundred of your friends and drinking champagne in a beautiful location, or whether you're like me, in a hospital. Let's share a little Christmas magic together. So we were going to take you to Paris. We were going to take you to some of our favorite Loire Valley Chateau and show you the amazing decorations there. This is not going to be the big blousy Christmas episode I would have loved to have given you, but I did want to share our Christmas spirit and our little miracle of Christmas with all of you because it really is a miracle. Let's go back a few weeks where we got started with all of our big Chateau Love plans, the shopping for the Christmas tree, and getting all ready for the amazing videos we had planned for you. And of course, we also got started with the decorations here at our own Chateau. Getting started with the decorations at our own Chateau being the key words. And welcome back to the beautiful Loire Valley of France, where we are getting ready for Christmas. local garden center about to go buy a Christmas tree and it is definitely very Christmassy in here I love the way garden centers in every country look completely different do any of you remember these we used to cover our trees with these icicles when I was growing up. I love them. Ah, here we are. Now these are all very lovely, but I was thinking of something a little bit bigger. Have you found one? These here. Oh, that's more like it. I think these will do. See? That's all they are. <laughs> There's an even taller one in the back. I don't know that we need to go, you know, right to the top there, because that's just a little bit of extra. We'll have to cut that to put the angel on it anyway. So this one's fine. Uh, so as you can all see, if any of you remember, Simon is wearing my favorite hat. I say this. It's cold. Without a lot of sincerity. <laughs> it's cold today. What about this one, sweetie? What do you think? It's hiding in here amongst the others. I think you're buried in all the trees. I think it wants us to take it home. Yeah, okay. I think it looks good. Okay, good. Yep. 
<rire> Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Et voilà, je veux dire la caisse. Exactement. Bonne journée. Merci, bonne journée, joyeux Noël. I think I just got a little bit distracted by the decorations. These little elves are really cute. Oh, hedgehogs. And I love nutcrackers. I think I'll definitely do another nutcracker tree this year. And I love all these little plants for the house. I think I'm going to get something special for Simon's parents for their bedroom. Maybe some sparkly little white flowers for the Joan of Arc room. We have a really big pile of Christmas stuff to start unpacking. But first, we've got to get our tree set up. All ready, sweetheart? Yep. <laughs> I need to drill. Got your Christmas Crocs on? <laughs> My Christmas Crocs. Your Christmas Crocs. Oh. <laughs> Your Christmas Crocs. <laughs> I think it's gonna need a little table or something. You see, we totally should have bought a bigger Christmas tree. Why? <laughs> this is big enough. I know. Our car was. We need a bigger car for a bigger Christmas tree. Yeah, it's called a van. <laughs> we <laughs> totally need a van. We need a van. I think just a little table. Just a little table. It's actually minus four degrees outside. Normally our little chateau is really toasty, but it's a little bit cold today. Gonna fall over? Well, it will if someone bangs it, yeah. Okay. But, you know, this is the trick. This is the thing about putting it up on the um, tabletop. It's always a risk. So this is a little chateau trickery to make a three meter tree into a four meter tree. So what do you think? Table or no table? For me, I would leave it on the table. Okay. I think we need a little height, a little extra height. And I think, you know, by the time we put the sari and the Christmas decoration around the material that we have and in the train, we always like a little height, so. Oh yeah, tell everybody about the sari that we use at Christmas. Oh, well that was something we got on our honeymoon. Uh huh. Do you remember? Yes, but nobody and, else around. And we got it, we got it. <laughs> Uh, from Sri Lanka, where we went on honeymoon, mm -hmm. and there were um, it was a, just a nice um, market where they were selling saris, and they had them in all sorts of colours, of course, but they had this particular one in Christmassy colours. So I thought, you know, well, when we bought it, we didn't. Re I don't think we thought that we would use it for Christmas for a Christmas decoration, but afterwards, when we brought it home, we thought it'd be perfect, and so we've always put it around the tree. Ever yeah. since our entire married life, we've always put the sari around the tree. Yes. At Christmas time. And it's been kind of our little memento from Sri Lanka from our honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. It's really <laughs> plump and fabulous. And so basically, there's a big debate amongst everyone throughout the world about real trees or fake trees. And we come into a rather unusual category in that we do both. We do, and uh, probably by accident because one year we were somewhere and we couldn't do um, a real tree for some reason. Anyway, mm -hmm. we bought an artificial tree and you know, we normally, between us, we much prefer real trees. Yes. But we found a really nice one uh -huh. and so we always use it uh, just because it just looks great. You know, it gives you the... Um, the kind of uh, department store Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we always idea. have our our family tree, which is a real tree, ideally, and then we have our, like you call them, the department store, our theme trees. Let's call them our theme trees. Well, they're they the thing about them is they're entirely even. Yes. You look at this tree; it's going to be off. Piggledy piggledy, isn't one it? One way or another, right? Because that's how trees grow. Trees yes. don't grow perfectly. <laughs> So this is just the beauty of a real tree, apart from the fact that it smells. Yes. Uh, in the morning when you come down, it smells, and as soon as you put it in, it has some water under here, so we can keep, mm -hmm. we can keep it alive, although it's not in the water, so, yeah. <laughs> it's well, serving no it purpose like, whatsoever. <laughs> <it's realized laughs> like, not actually this is the most useless bowl of water in the world. There was some real thinking going on uh, there. Uh, <laughs> We have our work cut out for us because your mother and father, my in-laws, are going to be here. It also means our house has to be 
really clean because your mother will very much like our house to be very clean. It's not just that my mother likes to clean the house. I mean like a really clean house, like, you know, because there's chateau clean and there's really clean. I'm really excited that they're coming. Yes. And, uh, and of go. course, we get our lovely daughter back for Christmas uh, as I well. I can't see Isabella. She's going to be coming back full of stories. Um, you know. It's great. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay. Now we have a real puzzle. <laughs> What's going on here? I can't. I can't. <laughs> get the bowl of water out. <laughs> Look, the bowl, the bowl is too big to come out through the... Triangle at the, the side. The tree is too big to lift it's it up. It's too high to come underneath. <laughs> now we're going to start setting up a couple of the artificial trees in the Grand Salon. The Grand Salon actually is two rooms that we can open up into each other with the sliding doors behind me. And it also is the dining room, or one of the dining rooms. We actually have several tables throughout our little chateau, which are extending. And because often it's just Simon and me here, um, we don't need huge tables everywhere. Sometimes we just like to have the space, but equally sometimes we might have 12 or 14 people. And so it's great because in two or three of the rooms that we have here, we can actually adapt these tables and create all of these multifunctional areas. And we've got the leaves on the table. Good stuff. <laughs> Making progress? Yes. more greenery and decorations. This is going to be so much fun. Under here, this is a watercolor I painted of our very first Samoyed and Isabella. This was our first chateau, Chateau de la Motonnerie. She is, she was four years old. <laughs> oh. And then, just as we were getting in the spirit of Christmas, about three and a half weeks ago, we hit a hiccup. Hello everyone, and welcome to Paris. It's Christmas time, just right before Christmas, and some of you may have been wondering where are all of the Chateau Love Christmas videos? Um, so Paris sounds like a very glamorous place to be in the hospital, but as you can imagine, it's just like being in the hospital anywhere else, other than the fact that I have some lovely old buildings outside of my window. I am hoping to be out of here very shortly, so nobody should worry. I'll be bouncing around very soon. And meanwhile, I'm hoping that when I'm out of here, I'll be able to show you lots of the fun things that we're doing. So for several months now, I've been having some abdominal and back pain and we didn't think much of it to be perfectly honest. I thought it was the DIY. And, uh, and after lots of tests and getting things checked out, it turned out that I had a, a problem with my kidney of all things. And so, um, uh, the last few weeks have been an endless round of tests and then unfortunately an emergency surgery and I'm, I was just finally let out. So even though I would have loved to have shown you how we did all of the decorations and everything else, 
Uh, I managed to get some of the decorations up and then while I was away, Simon managed to finish some of them as well. So let's walk through and show you some of the decorations here in the chateau. And again, if you wanna see the big, big decorating and how we did things and how we dried fruit and everything else, check out the video at the end of this video of all of that from last year. So here we are in our dining room. We did lots of lovely wreaths and boughs and holly last year. We did a lot of these similar things as well, but, and these incredible embroidered napkins were sent as a gift. Aren't they spectacular? Thank you so much, Dina, for sending us those. There's a great story behind these plates. This sign and I went out shopping and we found these extraordinary pieces by Bernardo. It was such fun buying them. We thought we had to use them for Christmas. Well, we still haven't found our bedside tables. No, but, we haven't. But we have found some beautiful plates. And that's... They're all hand painted with gold and They've got a scalloped edge. I love the scalloped edge, and I love their simplicity. They have a sort of boat. Really pretty. Some plates. Another serving dish. I just absolutely love it. Thank you, sweetheart. Well, there we go. Merry early Christmas <laughs> to <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, some of you may remember that we did a double-sided tree, which we did again this year. So this year is more of the shades of copper and gold, which goes really well with the dining room. And especially the tapestry on the wall. And then if you come around here, on this side, it's shades of blue and pale pink which matches our little salon over here. And then around here, it's the Nutcracker tree again. Beautiful little ballerinas and nutcrackers. And as we come through here, we're in the entrance hall. Again, I just got home from the hospital, guys. So I haven't had time to do a big tidy or planning of this video, but I just wanted to show you, we do still have the staircase decorated and some other little Christmas decorations. And this is our real tree that we are going to be decorating tonight as a family with the family ornaments, which is always a wonderful tradition that we love to share. Also, several people have sent us some beautiful gifts that I would like to show you. I mean, we don't, we don't expect gifts. We don't, we're, we're just incredibly touched when we receive them. And a few of them were extra special. So I just wanted to show them to you. A couple of them are from some very good friends of ours, but I thought you'd enjoy seeing them. And then a couple of them are from those of you out there that we haven't met yet. And again, oh my goodness, you know, we're not, we're a teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little channel. We, uh, we don't expect the same sort of uh, attention that, that is given to some of the others, and, but we are sincerely grateful. Thank you so much. Also from Dina is this incredible fromage de la semaine, cheese of the week. Four of these beautiful napkins.
This incredible gift is by Chris and Penny. And believe it or not, it's a bit of artwork of made of Fimo. So for those of you that didn't know that you could do other things other than jewelry and other things with Fimo, this is an actual like Fimo painting of our chateau, of Chateau de la Croix Boise. And it's spectacular. And even though she's no longer with us, there's a little tiny Pavlova, who sadly we lost last Christmas, as some of you may remember, in the picture. These incredible bookends were just sent to me by Sally, who many of you know from last Christmas. They are so incredibly gorgeous. Here is a wonderful gift. It's a print by our good friend Stephen Cole as a reminder of our happy days in Venice. Isn't it wonderful? So that is definitely getting framed and going up ASAP, St. Mark's Square, where if you look closely, see those squiggles? That has to be us in our wonderful 18th century costumes, which again, we were able to share with many of you when we went to Venice. It was just the most glorious experience. This beautiful object is actually a bird feeder and a wind chime. It's a glorious little gift from Stephen in Florida. Thank you so much. And it is actually silver. It's far too beautiful to put outside. It would get tarnished. And I realized that it's actually the perfect Christmas decoration. And then a gift which completely took our breaths away. This one is from Stephanie. And it is a magnificent Joan of Arc statue, quite similar to the one that we gilded when we did the renovation of the Joan of Arc bedroom. It's a little bit different in a few ways and we just really, we were just really so completely overwhelmed when we received this. And now we have to find the perfect location for it. Right now it's on the landing where everyone walking up and down the stairs can see it. Simon has been such an incredible superstar for the last couple of weeks. He's doing all of the Christmas cooking and wearing fromage de la semaine cheese of the week apron. It's so super. Nice. This is so nice. It looks so good on you, Great. sweetie. I love the color. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's nice. I like this. It is just wonderful. It's embroidered. It is, it's beautiful. Wasn't that such a lovely yeah, gift? Very nice. <laughs> Thank you for that, it's wonderful. So Simon is in his very fancy... Beast. <laughs> Where did you get that? From Egypt, of course. Yeah. Yes. Do you recognize it? Some of you might remember when he was buying this in the Nubian village in Egypt. Yeah. And what have you got for us tonight? This, this is roast duck with orange. Oh, magnificent. It's gonna yeah. be a perfect Christmas. Despite our little setbacks, it looks really beautiful, sweetheart. Thank you so much for doing all the Christmas preparation. Um. Who's gonna be my helper, Isabella? I need someone to pass me up decorations. This video is also dedicated to our wonderful guests that were meant to be with us this Christmas. And unfortunately, due to the circumstances, we had to cancel on them. So we have a very small Christmas this year. We just have Isabella and Simon's parents with us. They were already here when a lot of this was going on. And so we are so happy to have them, but the extended friends that we wanted to have here are not here with us. And of course that makes us a little bit sad, but there is always next year.
I want you all to know how much I love you. Merry Christmas!